I want to continue with some applications of exponential functions um, and logarithms and stuff like that. So this is the first thing we're going to start with is some nice applications problems. And then um, it's going to segue into some other things. And then next week I want to start doing um, laws of logs and, and um, talking about um, exponential functions and their inverses and how to find their inverses and all that. So there's a lot of meaty stuff we've got going on for the next couple weeks um, as far as um, as far as uh, exponential logarithmic functions go. But right now this is really cool. So what I want you to know is that um, I am almost showing you some really neat stuff that you'll likely see, not likely, you actually will see when you get into calculus um, later on in your, you know, in your senior year. But uh, because exponential growth and decay is pretty potent and powerful and necessary and it's natural, right? So there you go. So Newton, Isaac Newton, um, he basically said that if you um, if you were to keep a room at a constant temperature, nobody bothers you, blah, 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 depending upon what the temperature of the room is, dictates how fast you can determine how something is cooling to that temperature or how um, something is warming to that temperature. So um, look at over here, it says let Y represent the temperature of a slice of pizza in a room whose temperature is kept at a constant um, rate of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That is chilly, right? It's a vampire. So let's say that there's pizza and there's pizza cooling from 100 degrees to 90 degrees in 10 minutes. How much longer is it gonna take it for it to decrease to 80? And this, um, so we have this whole thing called Newton's Law of Cooling. And what I did was I gave you the general equation for any room that's kept at a constant temperature of 60 degrees. Um, that's where that 60 comes from. And then right over here, does this look familiar to you? It kind of looks like PERT, doesn't it? So it kind of feels like PERT. It's because it is. It's just that in uh, calculus, they use different um, term, they use different variables, which is awesome. So anyhow, we have y equals ce to the kt plus t. So in order for us to determine, because right now the piece of pizza, it takes 10 minutes for it to decrease from 100 degrees to 90 degrees. We want to find out how long does it take for it to get down to 80 degrees because we don't want to burn our tongue, right? We don't want to be, you know, to where 80 degrees is super comfortable. Some people are super sensitive, so we want to make sure that they're comfy, okay? So... In order for us to solve this problem, we got to find some variables before we can find out how long it takes to, um, for it to be 80 degrees. We have to go and find out what that R is, which is technically our rate of um, increase or decrease, and we have to find out what C is. So one of the most important things is to pick through what you see in this problem. So for the first thing is, I hope you're noticing that you go from 100 degrees to 90 degrees in 10 minutes, right? So I almost look at it as that we have two ordered pairs here, that the initial temperature of the pizza is 100 degrees, right? Well, we're going to let, um, whoops, or we're going to be a temperature, I'm sorry, we're going to be time, and then temperature is our x comma y respectively, right? So that's one ordered pair. And then it takes 10 minutes for it to decrease to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So our job is to find out how long is it going to take it to get to 80. So that's what we're trying to find out. So, so far we took and sifted through this and we're like, oh, okay, we got the kind of cool stuff. So we're going to go ahead and do what we need to do. So now I am going to use this initial value here to find out what C is. So I'm going to plug 100 in for Y and 0 in for T because this is, you know, this is a T comma Y situation where I keep hitting that. That's so annoying where that's our time and this is our temperature. So I'm going to do 100 is equal to CE to the K times 0 plus 60. And then if you know, it's E to the 0. And E to the 0 is always going to be 1 because that's K times 0. Because remember, E to the 0 is equal to 1 because anything to the 0 is 1. So we have 100 is equal to C plus 60. So now we can establish that C is equal to 40. So, so far in this equation, we were able to find out, whoops, I don't have to put C there anymore. I can actually put 40 there, can't I? So I'm going to put my little 40 in here. So I have 40E to the KT plus 60. So, because in other words, our temperature is varying based on time. So that's why we want to find out what the constants are for C and K, because those are going to be constant values. It's that the time and the um, temperature was actually varying, but we're just trying to find out what those rates are as we go along. So now we use that first ordered pair to help us find out what C is. Now we're going to use that second ordered pair to help us find out what K is. And that's what's really great about these problems is that there's enough information for us to use in order to establish 
what variable is what, and we take it in a step-by-step -step fashion. So here I am, I'm gonna do my 90 is equal to 40, and this is gonna be e to the 10k power, because uh, t is equal to 10, plus 60. And if I do my order of operations properly, I'm gonna subtract 60 from both sides, right? So that's gonna be subtract 60, subtract 60, and that gives me 30, so now I have 30 is equal to 40 e to the 10k power. And I'm gonna divide both sides by 40. So now I know that's 3 fourths is equal to e to the 10k power. And again, we solve this by uh, rewriting this in log form. So you can either do, you could do log base e of um, 3 fourths is equal to 10k. Or if you remember, the inverse of e is the natural log, so you can either do that or you can do the natural log of 3 fourths is equal to 10k when we write it in that power. Because if you remember, if we have like y equals you know a to the x power, we rewrite that as log base a of y is equal to x. That's always that beautiful property that we have, which is how we got from here or here. So then if I do that, I'm just gonna do my final answer for k by doing the, I'm gonna use the natural log because it's easy the natural log of 3 fourths divided by 10, because I'm gonna divide both sides by 10, and I get t is equal to negative 0 0.0287. Go out as actually 288, look again, Char, okay? Because I think the more decimals we use, the better off we are. That's not t, that's k. Um, oops, that's equal to k, which I'm sure you guys are like, that's k, Sishwa, you're right. So now, and it makes sense that it is, um, that that uh, rate is negative because we are cooling 260. So we started off with something high and now we're decreasing down to um, 60. So now if you look at the general equation that represents the pizza situation, right? We can now say that Y is equal to 40 E to the negative 0 0.0288 T plus 60. So that's gonna be the general equation. So now I can, this is the general equation for the pizza because it's the pizza that we're talking about, but this was this represented anything that it either cooled or warmed up to 60 degrees. So when I'm looking over at this guy, this is what's gonna help us with the specific pizza situation. So now we know we need to find out how long does it take the temperature to, re to decrease to 80 degrees. So because I don't have any room, I'm going to go to a new page and I'm gonna do, whoops. Up, new page, and I'm going to do y is equal to 40 e to the negative 0 0.0288 t plus 60, right? That's the equation, and now we're going to plug in 80 to find out how long it takes it to cool down to 80 degrees, because remember, we're trying to get the pizza down to where people who have super sensitive um, um, temperature things going on, we want to find out how long it takes. So here we are, so we're going to solve for t again, so we're going to subtract 60 from both sides, we get 20, right? So we get 20 is equal to 40 e to the negative 0, what point 0, I'll put that 288t power, divide both sides by 40, so I get 1 half is equal to e to the negative 0, 0.02888t power, and so forth, blah, blah, blah. So again, we have an exponential equation. We're going to take, um, we're going to rewrite this in log form. I'm just going to jump to the natural log and say the natural log of 1 half um, is equal to negative 0 0.0288t. And what's interesting, if you find the natural log of a half, you're going to get a negative number, by the way. We're going to find out why that happens next week. Um, and then, um, so when we divide by this negative, it's still going to work out. Or, yes, for those of you who are still hooked on log, log base e of a half is equal to that same junk over here, negative 0 0.0288t. So let me see, so natural log of a half, and then of 0.5, divided by negative uh, 0 0.0288, and I get 24, I get t is equal to 24.068, and I hope you're all saying minutes, because I do believe our units were in minutes, so I'm going to go back here, yes, because this is in minutes, so I have to wait. So if you want to eat that pizza to where it's 80 degrees, you have to wait 24 minutes before you can actually do it. So those are nice. That's a nice applications problem. And I'm going to give you something very similar to that um, that I'm going to have you guys work on. 
Um, the next thing I want to show, there's actually two of them that I want you to work on, but I'm going to show you something first before I do that. So one of the cool things is, is we're going on to the next thing. So let's say, for example, I want to write the equation that represents this function. And we can clearly see that it's exponential. I'm telling you it's an exponential function. And if I were to ask you to write the equation for this, you know, we always go back to our good old friend y equals ab to the x power, because that's the general parent formula, excuse me, for exponential functions, right? So one of the things we need to find, if we're going to do it, we have to find out what A is, and we have to find out what B is, where A is our initial amount, and B represents our rate of growth or decay, our percentage of growth or decay. So what we're going to do here is, is I always like to take this guy here, right? If it crosses anything where you know that it's equal to zero, we can always do 1.5, right? Because we're going to plug in for X and Y respectively when we do this is equal to a b to the zero power. And b to the zero power is, doo -doo -doo -doo, it's one, so we know that a is equal to 1.5. So, so far in this exponential equation, we know that um, a is equal to 1.5, right? And um, ba -ba 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 -ba, we are trying to find out what b is now, right? So we're trying to find out what b is equal to. So we use our first ordered pair to find out what A is. Now we're going to use our second ordered pair to find out what B is. It kind of goes back to like this equation where we had C and we had K, where we used our first ordered pair to find C, and we used our second ordered pair to find out what K is. So now, um, jumping over here, so now I can go ahead and I'm going to plug in 6 is equal to 1.5 and then it's going to be b to the 6th power. This is where things start to get really fun and interesting. No, it's the second power. Oh, sure. Okay. Right? Yeah, it's going to be b to the second power. <laughs> I just had a moment, you guys. Just bear with me. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and solve this out. So I'm going to divide by 1.5. So 6 divided by 1.5 is 4. So 4 is equal to b squared. And then to undo the b squared, we do plus or minus, right? So we're doing plus or minus the square root of 4. But it's only going to equal 2 because our base is only allowed to be positive. You guys need to think about y. So b is equal to 2, okay? So now we have y is equal to 1.5 times 2 to the x power because that is what it is. So now I could say now, now that I have the equation that represents this curve, I could say... You know, if I plug in negative 2, what's this ordered pair right here on the graph? And you could just be like, oh, y is equal to 1.5, and then it would just be 2 to the negative 2 power, like so. And 2 to the negative 2 power is the same thing as 1 over 2 squared, which is 4. So this winds up being 1.5 divided by 4, and 1.5 divided by 4 is 0.375. So if you were to go to this graph, this would be the point negative 2 comma negative 0.375 and so forth. And let's say you want to know when this thing is equal to 4. So we can set this equal to 4, and we can do 4 is equal to 1.5 um, times 2 to the x power. So again, we're going to divide both sides by 1.5, divide by 1.5. So 4 divided by, whoops, clear 4 divided by 1.5 is 2.6666. So it's um, 2 and 2 thirds, right? So it's two and two thirds. I don't know why I'm having a moment here. So that's eight thirds. So we have eight thirds is equal to two to the x. And here we are. We have a uh, exponential equation. So now we want to rewrite it as a log. So we can go log base two of eight thirds is equal to x. So on your calculators, you can do that. So there you go. Type that in here. And we should wind up with x is equal to one point. One, whoops, excuse me, x is equal to 1.415, and we are good to go, and that should make sense because 1.415 is because this is 1 here, right? So 1.415, it makes sense that that's where your graph would be, okay? So it's kind of like if we were, if you remember, we were doing problems like this where we were trying to find exponential functions, log functions, and so forth. Okay, now it starts to get really interesting because... Again, this is an exponential function, and I'm asking you guys to find the equation of this exponential function. So we have y is equal to ab to the x power, and we have to find out what a and b are. So we have to go about this, and we're like, wait a minute, there's nothing here where it crosses for zero to help me find out what a is. 
So now we have to go on to plan B. And plan B is this. We have to set up a system of equations and we have to solve our little hearts away. What do I mean by that? Well, we have negative two. We're going to plug in for, whoops, we're going to plug in for x and y respectively. And I already plugged in wrong. But um, I'm going to plug this point in. Here's my x, here's my y. And then I'm going to do a second equation where that's my x and that's my y. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to do 5.33. 3 is equal to a times b to the negative 2 power. And my second equation is going to be 0 0.534 is equal to a b to the 6th power. Okay? Now, one of the first things we could do is I'm going to go back up to this guy and I'm going to solve this for a, okay? Which means, because this is the same thing as if you look at it, I can rewrite this as 5.333 equals a over b squared because b is negative. Is everybody okay with that? I sure hope so if you know your laws of exponents. But if I solve this equation for a, I'm going to have 5.333 times b squared is equal to a. So if I solve that for a, I can plug it into a down here, hello, so I can figure out what b is equal to. Isn't that cool? So again, I said I'm going to make an, um, two different equations by plugging in x and y. This is equation 1. This is equation 2. I'm going to solve equation 1 for a and let it do what it needs to do, and then I can go ahead and substitute it into the second equation down here. Doesn't that remind you of being a familiarity when you were doing um, systems of equations when they were linear? Well, these are exponential. And guess what? You're in algebra. So we should be doing some sexier things in algebra. So I'm going to make that b squared times b to the sixth. Okay. So now, in order to do that, we are going to divide both sides by, first of all, b squared times b to the sixth. I hope you're all saying it's equal to b to the eighth power. Please tell me that you're saying that. Um, so, but before I do that, we're going to divide, whoops, we're going to divide both sides by that 5.333. So I have 0.534 divided by 5.333, and I get <clears throat> point zero. whoops, oops, and I get 0 0.10013126, uh, six. okay? And that's equal to b to the eighth power. Okay. And now, and now what I want to do is I am going to undo the a, uh, b to the eighth power by doing the eighth root of both sides. So it's 0 0.10013126 is equal to b because, you know, that's going to be the eighth root of b to the eighth. So that's just b is equal to blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go ahead and do my math, scroll down to 5, and whoops, um, I think it's 8 math, I think, on my old, my calculator is so old. Um, and then it's 0 0.10013126, and you get 0 0.75, so I get about 0.75. So B is equal to 0.75. So I did all that magic to get 0.75 right now. So I have in my equation, I have y is equal to a times 0.75 to the x power. By the way, b should be less than 1. Would you all agree with that? b should be less than 1 because this is an exponential decay. So my b works out beautifully. Now, to find out what a is, all we have to do is substitute. Um, actually, now that we know what b is, hold on a second. We know what B is, so we can simply plug it back into this guy to find out what it is. So if I just do 5.333 times 0.75 squared, which I'm going to do, so 0.75 squared times 5.333, I wind up with 2.99999, which I'm going to say is 3. Okay, so this winds up being 2.99999, so I'm going to say that A is equal to 3. And therefore, my equation is 3 times 0.75 to the x power. This is the equation that represents this guy right over here. So now I can find out what this point is, right? And you're looking at it and you're saying, I, it looks like it's three. Well, now we can actually verify it by plugging in zero and saying, oh, 0 0.75 to the zero is in fact one times three is three. And then I can get crazy and say, well, 
when does this thing equal, let me get great, when does it equal six, right? So it equals six somewhere between negative two and negative three, and we're actually gonna confirm that. So we'll go ahead and we'll do our six is equal to three times 0.75 to the x power. It's good for us to do all of this stuff. Divide both sides by three and we get two is equal to 0.75 to the x power. Again, this is an exponential function. We wanna write as a log. Our base is 0.75, so it's gonna be log base 0.75 of two is equal to x. And let's see what magically happens when we find out what that is. Wow, it's negative 2.409. So x is equal to negative 2.409. And I already said it was somewhere in between negative 2 and negative 3. Go me. So there it is. It's right up there. Okay. I'm going to do one more with you. And then we are going to go off into the sunset. And you guys are going to try some of these problems on your own because you are awesome. Okay. If you want to hit pause and find the equation of this on your own and then check it, that would be awesome. Okay. That would be absolutely awesome. But I'm going to do it for you. We're going to do it together here first. And then, again, you can check your answers, and then we can call it a day. So, again, we have our y equals ab to the x power. And because there's no, we don't know what the uh, x, inter I'm sorry, the y intercept is, we have to set up a system of equations, right? So we're going to plug in. So we have 8 is equal to a. B, well, I keep doing this backwards, you guys. I don't know what I'm doing this for. Oh, I'm so careless. All right, so this is, I don't know what I'm obsessed with this number eight today. Um, so we have 3.576, right, equals, I'm gonna make it look neater. I'm so sorry. Six mm, equals AB to the eighth power. And then over here we have negative four blah, 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 blah. So we have 0 0.246 is equal to um, AB to the negative fourth power. And again, you have the option of solving one of these for A. I'm going to go with this one because it just feels easier because this is the same thing as A over B to the fourth is equal to 0 0.246. So if I multiply both sides, I get B to the fourth times 0.246 is equal to a. It doesn't matter if I write it this way or the other way because of commutative property. So now I can go back up to this guy and I'm going to go over here because so, I have some space. I have um, 3.576, right? See, it is, yeah. So it's going to be 3.576. 3.576 is um, equal to um, 0.246 times b to the fourth times b to the eighth, right? And again, when you have the same bases, you add the exponents. So, and we're going to divide both sides by this 0.246. So we have um, 3.576 divided by 0.246 is equal to b to the 12th power, right? So again, it's b to the 12th. So if I want to undo that, the inverse of that would be the 12th root. So it's going to be the 12th root of 3.576 divided by 0.246 is equal to the 12th root of b to the 12th. And again, I'm only interested in the positive stuff um, just because you can't have a negative base. So again, I'm going to go to my math. I'm going to scroll down. Well, before I do that, you have to hit the 12 first on my calculator. And then go to math, scroll down to number 5. And then it's going to be 3.576 divided by 0.246. And I think, let me use parentheses. I think I have to use parentheses. Yeah. So insert parentheses and then close the parentheses. Uh-oh, it's telling me to go to. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I use braces. You guys, I'm using all kinds of weird symbols here. Second insert, 3.576 divided by that. Yes. Okay. It did make a difference. So just make sure that when you have this, because I, I didn't do that, when you have it in your calculator, since I have the fraction, Make sure that it's in parentheses, okay? I didn't do that initially, and I got a different answer because I did wind up with B. Uh, initially, was 4.5, which was wrong. It should be 1.25 is what my B is equal to, okay? So when you do this, just make sure, again, I got careless with my parentheses, which I'm happy about, so that way you don't get careless with your parentheses. So we have A times 1.25 to the X power, and again, 
should make sense because B, this is a growth, so B should be greater than 1, and in fact it is. And now we can go and find out what A is equal to because A is equal to B to the 4th times 0.246. So 1.25 to the 4th power, enter times 0.246. A is equal to 0.6. So we have y is equal to 0 0.6 times 1.25 to the x power. Well, I don't know why I put a star there. Um, to the x power. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. And the great thing is, is now we can find out what this y-intercept is by plugging in 0. And 1.25 to the 0 is 1 times 0 0.6. So this is 0 comma 0 0.6. And again, since I have this function now, I can ask you for any point on the curve. I can just draw a line and say, where does it equal 3? And you can plug in 3 for y and do what you got to do. And that's basically all she wrote. So my thing is, is let's go back, is that we now know how to find the equations of exponential functions, whether you're given the y-intercept or whether you're given two other points on the graph using a system of equations. Okay. And what we did is that kind of tied into what we did over here of how we're talking about applications problems for exponential growth and decay, where um, our job is to use certain pieces of information to find certain variables, so that way we can go about um, finding what our final answer is. But we have to go through several steps in order to get us there. I hope this was helpful, and enjoy watching, and I have some work for you guys to do thereafter, and peace out.